Hey everyone, Adam Zollinger here from LearnArchViz. Welcome to my channel all about architectural visualization. While you are here, make sure to like and subscribe if you benefit from the content. The following video is a free preview from a larger course. Follow the links in the description to find the best deal for the full content. Okay, I finished uh, adjusting the people. I put the little birdies in. The birds are easy. They just uh, was, were another image from GoboTree, and I took them. Let's see what we did here. I took them, added some color balance to them, added some levels to them. Make sure and make them fade into the background a little bit more as they get further away. Right, same principles we've been using. And they just kind of uh, add a little bit to the composition there. It's a nice little touch, I think. Could be a little bit overdone. Maybe you just need one bird. I don't know. This is where your artistic license comes in, so that's what makes it fun, right? The possibilities are endless. So I want to just show you one more groups, one, one more of these groups of people. Did it the same way as we did this guy over here. Let's turn off everything. Okay, so that's what they look like at first. Put a curves on it to make it a little less contrasty so it fits the scene a little better. The shadows are already painted in there. Color balance to make them a little more red because they're standing in this red light here. And then an overlay layer to give them their kind of, to change their lighting a little bit. Make painting blue on their back sides and, and this orangey red on their front sides. This levels I didn't end up using although might work. Turn it down a little bit, maybe in there. More highlights being painted. Color balance. That's a little extreme. Let's turn that down, making them a little too orange there. And then another curves because I thought they still looked a little too contrasty. Okay, and there you go. So off on. So they did look like. No, they did look like that standing out a little too much and now they look like that okay so this is where you can oh and you'll notice that those people are slightly down lower because they are just standing lower in the scene the ground is lower there so their eye level doesn't match everybody else's these people over here same trick as everything else these people as well okay so there you go there's our people into the scene there's our birds now with some final touches we could talk about some let's look at this yeah that looks good some final touches we can do we can kind of go nuts on this i'm what i'm going to do is just show you a bunch of different things and we may or may not be keeping any of them but i want to show you all the different things that you can do so one thing that i usually do is adjust sharpness you can do that my favorite way to do that is by jumping everything to a new layer Control alt shift e right it takes all this jumps it to a new layer as a copy and what you can do is set that to soft light now okay and that adds a ton more contrast to your scene and then you can go filter other high pass and in here this kind of gives you control over how you want the sharpening to happen it's really just sharpening it so this is sharpening with ooh that's nice right this is like a tight sharpen here it looks really kind of fake right and this is like an unsharp mask with a larger radius and just kind of adds a lot of contrast so you can play with that but be careful not to go overboard what I want to do really is sharpen this building here so I'm looking at that specifically for what looks good and then put a mask on it invert the mask and then paint back in the parts that we want to be sharpened so our area of, of focus is right in there so we'll leave that sharpened and then make sure it's not overdone too. So you can fine tune obviously by turning it up and down. That's nice. Okay, so sharpening is one thing we can do. Then we can go just nuts on. One thing we haven't done yet actually is crop out this side that we're not actually using, right? I want it right about where that tree is. So you can do this by putting a big black square here on a new layer obviously. Make sure we're set to black. Crop off some of the bottom if you want to. Depends on what you want. Okay, so is that the composition we want? If you hit F, 
it will take you to a black screen and show you your full composition and then this black box that we put over here just becomes part of it that looks pretty good okay so we're gonna leave it like that this needs to stay on top at all times right so let's see what else we can do I mean you can just go crazy with adjustment layers right you can do you can do a photo filter to warm the whole thing up or cool the whole thing down I don't know maybe you can also do one of my more favorite ones which is a color lookup and this is like some true color grading going on here this lookup color lookup is basically taking all the pixels in your scene and then running it against a color lookup table which says okay if it's this color make it this color if it's this color make it this color so these things adjust your colors according to the lookup table here and these lookup tables can kind of be set up to match real cameras real life cameras physical cameras or other things but you can see this is shifting everything shifting all your colors okay and this one's actually cool this fall colors look okay so this is kind of shifting everything to be more in this warm fall colors and you can take that and turn it down but leave it as your as your adjustment layer there and it kind of adjusts your whole scene to look more like fall colors I kinda of like that one you can go back into doing overall curves now that our people are in we can uh, do this kind of stuff turn that down a little bit okay so that's really looking like a fall scene you can jump to a new layer again and then do your filter blur lens correction and add your your slight very slight chromatic aberration which I assume all of you know what that is but it's a phenomenon that happens with camera lenses where as you get closer to the edges you get a, a fringe around different objects so you can actually add that back in inside of 3d you can see it will it can make your image expand a little bit depending on how you do it but that just adds that slight fringe in and might add a little bit more realism like around this dude you'd have some nice fringe going on if we go really dramatically we can see the fringe appear over here on this guy but you want to be more subtle in your use of this fringe getting some fringe around the light on that guy so it's it's basically imitating what a camera lens would do a physical camera lens it's trying to anyway okay just and one thing you can use here instead of here is the vignetting you want to use vignetting here to darken and this is again imitating actual physical lens phenomena here as you get closer especially with a wide-angle lens as you get closer to the edges it will get darker it'll create a vignetting effect which serves the purpose here of I mean it makes it look more like a physical camera lens a physical camera photograph but it also draws our eye to the center of the scene which we definitely want for this okay so on off very subtle here very subtle unless you want to look like a rookie okay I think overall the vibrance of my scene is not looking good and I should say that this this level here or this layer here the sharpening layer and the vignetting layer usually I would do dead last okay but for now since we're just demonstrating so new layer adjustment what did I say we were gonna do oh the colors are too bright so there's hue saturation in here which does this I mean that's just a straight up saturation you go straight to black and white if you go all the way down but the vibrance is more of a smart hue saturation so the vibrance adjustments there's still a straight up saturation in here but vibrance usually works a little better see what it's doing is it's kind of desaturating the the stuff that's really saturated is kind of getting dulled out but color isn't going entirely away so there's still some red in that brick there so that's like a smart saturation kind of and I think somewhere right around there is good yeah something like that and let's look at it I mean that's a good that's a great image right there you can you can go with it from here or you could keep going and stylize it even more I mean you could go let's just do some crazy stuff here let's make this an overlay we'll start doing this kind of stuff let's grab some of these deep blues paint them down here that be deeper blue than that okay 
and turn it down a little bit. Okay, that's not bad. Turn it off and on to see the effect. Okay, cool. You can do stuff like adding reflection. Let's jump this all to a new layer again. Transform it. I do this sometimes. Just if you want to get it more stylized looking. Filter, blur. Now the more heavy you do all this stuff, the more chance it is that it's not going to look super photorealistic because you're doing a bunch of stuff that isn't physically accurate, right? So I'm just motion blurring this. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Put that as an overlay. Put it all down here. And then go back in and paint some places where you want some kind of reflection looking stuff, right? Some of that looks all right. Not much of it. Don't like the way it looks over here. Okay, just kind of give it that more whimsical feeling going on here. Do some more overlays even. Go crazy here. Let's get a color like, whoop, like that. Turn that down a little bit. You could go and paint in some, some bright colors in here. Okay, let's group all these together and just turn them on and off. You see that, that makes a dramatic change. Okay, so you could leave it like that. That looks more stylized than this. But cool, right? Maybe I'm thinking we could do some more vignetting, maybe paint in our own vignetting up here. Something like that. Invert that mask again. And then maybe just some overall colors if you want you could try that just do a fill layer and over put it to overlay turn it down something like that or you can just go into here and um, adjust that color and see what kind of effects you can get like I think that's kind of cool as you go more this direction like this greenish tint it's giving us a similar effect to the curves that we were doing earlier right tinting the whole thing green I think that's cool look at that so with with all that craziness we just did that's the different effects it it's pretty dramatic actually the only thing I don't like is this one window right there gotta erase that okay now yeah the rest of that's cool if you want a more stylized look okay now you can just save it out and uh, you're pretty much done here. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I hope you've learned some good, some good tips and tricks. And really, I hope what you've seen is that sky's the limit. It's just your imagination that's limiting you. So I'm showing you some of the tools here. Take these and apply them with the files I give you. Do your own work. Don't just take what I've got. I want you to take what I give you, add on to it, and make some really cool images. And in Photoshop, use the tools that I've shown get some good ideas to post process yours in a totally different way and make it look cool according to how you want it come up with your own style okay so there you go I'm hopefully arming you with everything you need to make some cool images and I'm excited to see what you guys can come up with 